Well, it is of course time to talk about the final of the three vehicles in GT7 1.44, the 2016 facelift generation Audi R8 V10 Plus. So, what does it offer? Well, it's a naturally aspirated V10, which is a pretty nice start. Feels like something that's kind of going away in this day and age. Although I say this day and age, 2016 actually isn't that recent anymore, if you think about it, eight years ago, which is kind of insane. In terms of its weight, that is actually something which genuinely impresses me. 1,454 kilos, although no super light, is probably about a good 100 kilos less than I would have guessed it would be. 15, 1,600 kilos is about what I've come to expect from many supercars these days because they're bigger and they have so much tech packed into them. So to be 1,450, not bad. In terms of horsepower, 601 is decent enough, certainly for a naturally aspirated engine. And even the price tag, well, it's kind of unremarkable, but it's certainly not bad. It's 300 grand, which is the same as the Urus. Personally, I would say buy the Urus out of the two because it's more different and potentially more useful. It's not expensive enough to be outlandish. It's not cheap enough to be a bargain. And that kind of brings me to the issue that I have with stuff like facelifted versions of supercars. Some of them do genuinely feel different. Like, take the Ferrari F8, for example. It's an evolution of what the 458 started, but it is a genuinely fantastic car that does at the same time feel different. Then you have something like a facelifted Audi R8. To me, it gets very close to facelifted Nissan GTR kind of territory, where you think, is this really necessary? It's slightly quicker, it has a bit more power, but I feel like that's more of a thing that matters in real life rather than in a game. Because in a game you can change the engine, the power, the weight and all that, etc. anyway, so who really cares if it has 10, 20 horsepower more? It doesn't really matter that much. Which is why, as I've said before, I don't really care for having stuff like the, for example, Nürburgring edition of the Lexus LFA. I built one in special projects and that's fine by me. I don't ever need to see the real version in the game. Sure, it would be a cool car for some people, but when you can just build it yourself, is it really that necessary? With an Audi R8, I feel the exact same way. It doesn't help for me personally that my favourite version is the original anyway. I prefer the original 2007 4.2. I think it's still the prettiest version they've ever done. This one, it's certainly quicker. You can tune it up to nearly a thousand horses. Of course, the point level skyrockets from an already pretty high 626. And of course, being a naturally aspirated V10, it's going to sound good anyway. As I alluded to in my overarching review for 1.44, to me, the standout thing about this is the visual upgrades. For me at least, it definitely saves the car from being something which I'll drive once and never use again. I will at least probably use it a couple of times and having the wide body and the aero, the aero upgrades in particular, making a pretty good looking difference to the car, extending the carbon kind of trim, having the different size wings to choose from, even debadging it, which is something you don't see too often in Gran Turismo 7. It does add much more of an extra layer of customizability and personality to an otherwise, I'm sorry to say it, very bland car in my opinion. Sure, it's got a cool engine, but what they wrap it in, I don't know. It, it kind of reminds me of even that first generation, how Top Gear described it back in 2007. They said it was a Marks and Spencer supercar. That has good connotations, but also it kind of leaves you with this idea of, mm, it's very German, you know? It doesn't really have as much charisma or personality, even with a V10 engine, as an Italian uh, you know, Ferrari, for example. And I was going to say Lamborghini, but that doesn't even count anymore because they're so similar underneath. That also brings up an issue which I have with the car as well. Because even though you could technically say, well, R8, Huracan, who really cares? Well, now that you can put the Chiron engine in the Huracan, it, it makes this car even more irrelevant. I wouldn't be at all surprised if they added the Chiron engine for this one later on. But for me, I'm mixed on it. It's not a bad car in any way. It looks impressive, sounds good, it's tremendously quick. It's certainly not bad through corners with four-wheel drive and a mid-engine layout. But even in real life, when I drove the older version, which was also a V10, but it was the open top spider, it just didn't really do it for me. I felt like I was out of the loop. So many people loved the car and I just didn't really enjoy it that much. For me, that goes into the game as well. It feels technically proficient, but there's something that's not quite there for me about the personality side of things. And I will almost always choose a car that has more personality and more character, even if it means I sacrifice a bit of performance or maybe not having quite as much horsepower as whatever else, like a Panos, for example, being a prime example in the past of the series. For me, this car is sort of a, eh, I could take it or leave it kind of thing. Ultimately, I feel like this is a car which you're either going to really love or not really care about at all. And I definitely fall more into the latter camp. That's it for my thoughts on the R8 though, and of course my thoughts on 1.44 in terms of vehicles as a whole. Of course, stick around for more GT7 content in future, and for now, thanks for watching.